Hello, I am Jessica Foley, Chief Scientific Officer for the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. And today I'll be talking with you about focused ultrasound and its potential role in cancer immunotherapy. You probably have heard of cancer immunotherapy. It's really the hottest area in cancer research and treatment these days. There are now currently FDA approvals for immunotherapies to treat more than 20 different cancers. And the most promising and well-known are probably the checkpoint inhibitors. These work by blocking immune checkpoints. Key checkpoints are shown in this picture. And these checkpoints are really the brakes of the immune system. And so by blocking them, the checkpoint inhibitors can unleash the immune response to be more significant in attacking cancer, either by kickstarting the immune response when it isn't ordinarily fired up or by enhancing and creating a more robust immune response. These checkpoint inhibitors have been key in providing many new treatments for patients with cancers, including metastatic disease. But even though they have been very promising and have shown benefits of tumor regression and increased overall survival, these therapies are still only effective in about 20 to 40% of patients. Although cancer immunotherapy is a hot area of research, it's still very important to raise awareness about both its promise as well as its limitations and gaps. And to help contribute to this awareness building, the Cancer Research Institute established June as Cancer Immunotherapy Month. I'll talk more about the Cancer Research Institute a little, little later, since they are a key partner for us at the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. In terms of limitations of current treatments, we see that many patients are not responding to immunotherapy. As I mentioned, only 20 to 40% are responders. This can be for different reasons. Maybe they have a type of tumor that's referred to as a cold tumor. This could be something like a prostate tumor that doesn't initially promote a strong immune response. Or it could be something specific to the patient, the genetic makeup of their tumor, for instance. Then there are also a lot of patients that do respond well to therapies, but eventually they relapse. These could be patients whose tumors are developing a resistance to the checkpoint inhibitors, for instance. Then there are other cases where the side effects and toxicities of the treatments are just too much. This is a systemic treatment and so that obviously could be a limitation for many patients, forcing them to stop treatment prematurely. So with these limitations come unique opportunities for focused ultrasound. There are several ways, ways that focused ultrasound could potentially play a role here. It could turn cold tumors into hot tumors. So an example of a hot tumor is something like melanoma. Maybe we could turn something like a prostate tumor into something that behaves more like a melanoma, for instance, and responds really well to immunotherapies. Also, focused ultrasound could, perhaps when combined with immunotherapies, enable a more robust and prolonged response. And to combat the high rate of side effects in some cases, we could use focused ultrasound to decrease the dose of drugs needed, potentially reducing the side effects. Through several mechanisms of action, focused ultrasound can enhance delivery of drugs precisely where they are needed, enabling a more localized rather than systemic treatment. This clinical case gives an example of why we are so excited about focused ultrasound's ability to induce an immune response. Here is a patient with pancreatic cancer. You can see he has a large primary pancreatic tumor that was treated using focused ultrasound ablation and had a good result in terms of the tumor shrinking over time. But what was really interesting in this case was finding that the metastatic tumors also tended to shrink over time. This abscopal effect, where treatment of the primary tumor results in a more systemic response, wasn't a goal of the study, but they did see this in a handful of patients. And so this anecdotal evidence shows the potential of focused ultrasound to induce an anti-tumor immune response, perhaps allowing for treatment of metastatic disease. This is super exciting for the field, but we still have a lot to learn on our pathway to developing new therapies. For a bit of context, this chart shows you the four pillars of cancer treatment. These are the primary ways in which patients are treated, and in most cases, they receive some combination of these treatments, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and now immunotherapy. And Focus Ultrasound really has a role to play in all of these, where it could be either an alternative or an adjunct to current treatments. We'll continue to focus on immunotherapy, where focused ultrasound has a significant potential to enhance the anti-tumor immune response or the delivery of immunotherapy. 
So how does focus ultrasound do this? Well, cancer cells have a way of hiding or camouflaging themselves from the immune system. And what focused ultrasound can do is essentially destroy that camouflage and expose tumor antigens that would then allow the immune system to detect the cancer. Once the immune system can recognize the tumors, it can launch an attack on both primary and metastatic tumors. And so, as I mentioned, focused ultrasound could potentially, when combined with immunotherapies, enhance the effectiveness of the treatment. For example, allowing more patients to be responders. But it also has the potential to improve the delivery of immunotherapeutics, whether it's through the blood-brain barrier opening for brain tumors or in other areas of the body. A unique aspect of focused ultrasound, and something that makes it very versatile, is that it has different modes of action, different mechanisms of action by which the ultrasound energy can interact with tissue. Focused ultrasound can produce heating, so it could be used for thermal ablation, as I mentioned before. Also, a lower level heating, something like a mild hyperthermia is possible. And then there are mechanical mechanisms using the mechanical properties of focused ultrasound energy to completely destroy tissue, like with histotripsy, or something that creates more modest and sometimes reversible mechanical damage. All of these different modes of focused ultrasound could potentially induce different immune responses. And this comparative response is something that we're trying to better understand and explore. That leads us to the burning questions that are really guiding the field right now. These are questions that we've defined through various workshops that we've held, as well as discussions with our scientific advisory board. In terms of where are our knowledge gaps to better understand focus ultrasound's role in inducing this anti-tumor immune response. First is what I mentioned before, the comparative immune effects induced by different modes of focused ultrasound. And also, how do these compare to other therapies that may be used more often to treat disease like radiation or RF ablation? How does the focused ultrasound immune response vary by tumor type? So again, we talked about these hot and cold tumors and can focused ultrasound have a different response depending on how those or those different types of tumors. Then what clinical disease targets are ideal for combination approaches of focused ultrasound and immunotherapeutics? And how can we improve and optimize focused ultrasound treatments? This could be different combinations of drugs, the timing of when the treatments are applied, that sort of thing. And then finally, and very critical for accelerating progress in this field, is what metrics can be used to predict clinical success and how can we measure the response that we're getting. There's work going on developing techniques where you can just take blood samples from patients before and after treatment and get an understanding of the immune response that has been generated by different therapies, for example. Several years ago, the Focused Ultrasound Foundation established a dedicated cancer immunotherapy program because we recognize this as a really critical area for focused ultrasound. And this slide shows that we have a large number of projects that we've been funding over the years. We've also established some key partnerships, and I'll mention these a little bit on the next slide. And all of these projects are focused on various clinical indications, as you can see here. We are most interested in ones where there's a high unmet clinical need, including brain, both glioblastoma and metastases, as well as pancreatic cancer. But we're funding projects in several different areas, and we're also trying to build a war chest of funding to be able to support all of this work as well as future research. We've had several key milestones for the cancer immunotherapy program since getting started back in early 2015. We formed a partnership with the Cancer Research Institute. They are the leader in cancer immunotherapy for the past 65 years in terms of funding the vast majority of researchers and important advancements in the field. And so we started in early 2015 partnering with them on these workshops, one in 2015, one in 2016, and the most recent one was summer of 2019. We formed a scientific advisory board that's been instrumental in developing the list of burning questions as I showed previously. We formed a working group that includes all the researchers in the field, and we've established important partnerships. Beyond the Cancer Research Institute, we've partnered with the Parker Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy, the Melanoma Research Alliance, and more recently, Pancreatic Cancer UK. These partnerships are critical because they are the experts in the field. We're bringing the focused ultrasound expertise, but we rely on their immunology and cancer expertise. They advise us on where we need to take the program, the questions we need to answer, 
and they also help validate the role of focused ultrasound in the field. Here's a snapshot of the many research sites around the world that are active in immunotherapy research with focused ultrasound. This is an evolving list with new sites coming online all the time. The Focused Ultrasound Foundation has played an important role in the growth of the field, and we are either directly funding these researchers or building collaborations that are critical to catalyzing the field. And finally, I'll highlight a few key projects. This field is still new, and so clinical trials are still in an early stage. Most ongoing studies, both preclinical and clinical, come in a few different flavors. The first, and I would say these are the most exciting, are clinical trials combining focused ultrasound with other immunotherapeutics, such as FDA-approved drugs like checkpoint inhibitors. At the University of Virginia, they are the first in the world to combine focused ultrasound plus a checkpoint inhibitor to treat patients with metastatic breast cancer. In this case, they are using Keytruda, which is very well known for helping cure Jimmy Carter of his metastatic melanoma. That trial is now about halfway complete, and while we don't have all of the results yet, early indications are that the combination approach may induce a stronger immune response than just the immunotherapy alone. Following on this trial is another trial at UVA in patients with advanced solid tumors. Again, also focused ultrasound plus a checkpoint inhibitor. And more recently, a trial started in France for patients with melanoma-related brain metastases. In this case, they're using a different mechanism, not directly impacting the immune response, but using focused ultrasound for enhanced delivery of a checkpoint inhibitor using the BBB opening mechanism of focused ultrasound to enhance the delivery of this immunotherapeutic into the brain. Then there are clinical trials where the primary goal is not related to inducing an immune response, but we may see that as an outcome. Like the images I showed you earlier of the patient with pancreatic cancer. There are many trials all around the world using focused ultrasound to treat cancer. And this provides an opportunity, if appropriate, to obtain blood or tissue samples before and after the focused ultrasound treatment. Assays of these samples could then help assess whether focused ultrasound alone induced an immune response in those patients. There are trials going on at Stanford and Oxford where they're using focused ultrasound ablation to treat pancreatic cancer, where they plan to also assess the immune response before and after treatment. And studies in Spain and at the University of Wisconsin treating liver cancer with histotripsy will also perform immune assessment. These types of trials are great to develop our understanding of how focused ultrasound on its own may impact the immune response. And then finally, there are several mostly preclinical studies of critical importance to determining the role of different focused ultrasound modes, as I mentioned. So looking at the comparative immune effects induced by these modes. The Focused Ultrasound Foundation has been funding a lot of this work, including a multi-site consortium in glioblastoma, where researchers at six different sites use the same animal model of glioblastoma, but each looked at a different mode of focused ultrasound. So each site could assess how their particular mode affected the immune response. Results suggest that histotripsy may be able to induce the strongest anti-tumor immune response in this model. But we recognize that different modes may be more appropriate in other tumor types or when paired with particular immunotherapeutics. There are also multimodality studies ongoing at UVA for breast cancer and pancreatic cancer, again, trying to assess the role of the different modes of focused ultrasound. To conclude, I hope you appreciate the breadth of great work going on in this field and join in our excitement about what the future holds for focused ultrasound and cancer immunotherapy. Thank you.